You know, I'm politicking with the homie Poe with Poe Politicking. Self-help meets hip-hop. That's fucking beautiful. What up, Poe? What up, DJ Period? Just two black brothers. I see y'all out there doing what y'all do, preserving the hip-hop culture and introducing the future stars. Keep shining, kings. Real and recognize real. Love is love. Salute. Yeah. PoePolitikin.com Welcome back to PoePolitikin.com, your home for self-help meets hip-hop. Make sure you check us out on um, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play while you can. They shut down Google Play. And, um, YouTube, one, two, one, two, and place to be with Sir7000. How you doing, bro? What's good, man? Why they call you Sir7000? What's shit? Um, my real name is Sir. Um, my dad wanted to name me Sir. My mom wanted to name me Jarvis. And, um, you know, they just put that bitch together. And uh, seven, that's my spirit number. Always been my favorite number until I found that was my spirit number. So, uh, I don't know, man. Just put the, the, the triple zeros behind it. And um, it's Sir 7000, man. Before that, it was Sir J. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I realized there was a lot of other artists, like, overseas that had that name as well. And stuff so uh you know ain't nobody had that man so it's just me just reinventing myself again you know all right then what's your hometown west palm beach florida so how you you went from you from you say you in cali now or in california yeah, I mean, you went coast yeah. to coast, huh oh nah man i um you know what i'm saying well I'm, I'm going back to uh, florida in a couple of weeks you know on uh, to check on my granny and everything but uh I moved to California about like five years ago. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? My whole ordeal was, um, like, at first I, I took a visit to Cali while I was still in Florida, and I just loved the vibe. And, I, and it just, it was this, uh, this uh, energy of uh, just go-getters and shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, people just really traveling, um, finding their dream or, or just pursuing it um, back in Florida. It's, uh, it ain't, it ain't really like that. It, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a lot of great, you know, artists and stuff, but uh, the it's interesting, man. It's a lot of, uh, you know, just different politicking and stuff. And um, Palm Beach is just crazy. Um, Palm Beach is a, you know, it's a survival of the fittest type of state. And California is too, you know what I mean? Like this is pretty much like one of the closest comparisons as far as, you know, with the palm trees and, the beaches and everything, but um, I don't know, man. Uh, I, I I went ahead and just took that leap, and um, it landed me in. It was crazy. At first, it landed me in Santa Ana because I was uh, producing for this um this uh Indian dude. It was this Indian artist, and um, you know what I mean. He he liked my shit and everything, and he wanted to he wanted me to teach him how to rap and stuff, and um. You feel me? Like I was teaching him how to rap, but he was like, nah, you know, I want to, I want to talk about, uh, you know, bullshit and everything. And it wasn't, it was, he wasn't being his true self, his true self, man. So, you know what I mean? I just made moves, got out of there, went into LA. Um, and I was just grinding there ever since, man. And, uh, I mean, like I said, it's just been a long, long, you know, beautiful struggle. It's been a journey though. It's been a journey. So now I'm out here in Hanford, you know, Got a family and everything, uh, and uh, you know my my wife, she's an artist as well. So you know we met in LA at a show and everything. So I don't know, man. It's uh, it's been a it's been a, it's been a journey. It's been, it's been a journey. So why rap? Why rap, man? Um, well, so I've been doing music since I was five, like playing the piano. I went to school for. Uh, classical piano, did some stuff with jazz. And uh, my dad, you know what I'm saying? Um, when I was little, my dad always introduced me to, to just hip hop, like Two Live Crew, Trick Daddy back then and everything like, uh, it was Money. just all, yeah, JT Money. Oh <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Hell yeah. Um, so it was always music in the household. My mom, uh, you know, she was just, she was trying to shy me away from hip hop. And she, so I felt like with that, it made me even yearn and even more. And oh, and MC Hammer, MC Hammer was one of my favorites when I was little too. Um, but my dad, you know, he, he played for the Harlem Globetrotters and he was DJing. Um, so he always had the cuts and, and shit. And um, I loved it, you know what I'm saying? And then when I started, you know, 
learning like classical music, I just started like making shit on my own where it's just on the key. So I was making beats at first. And then when I came around like 14 years old, that's when I was like, you know what, let me go ahead and, and write. You know what I'm saying? So that was pretty much the birth of it. Uh, my favorite um, artist growing up was uh, Ludacris and Ghostface Killer. So, you know what I'm saying? That's a that's a, a, a range itself. You know what I mean? What do you like about Ghostface? Uh, Ghostface, I felt like I just I just felt his lyrics more. The fact I don't know, he just sounds so emotional. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? He like it sometimes it sounds like he about to cry on the track and everything, but I fucks with it like. You just feel his soul and his heart on it. Made me cry on the track. I cried on that one song that time that um that song he got um that song with by, um Mary J. Blige, Lord um so All I got is you. Yeah, I was crying when I first heard that shit. Like, God damn. <laughs> I use I I ain't cry, but I remember I, I had that bitch on repeat, man. I, I remember I would go to sleep to that song. That shit just be going back over and over. Mm. But um I fuss with Ghostface. I fuss with Wu Tang all together, but um uh, like as far as album goes and shit, like I I heard of all those space projects. And then how would you describe your sound? Um, my sound is just like a, you know what I mean. I'm like my collective, which is what I what I stand by is uh BAPS University, and BAPS stands for banging ass proper shit. So with that, um, I just feel like, you know, it's all about the frequencies and um, and like. I like, I'm, I'm from the South, I'm from Florida, you know what I'm saying? I love 808s and all this stuff. Um, but at the same time, like, um, I want to speak something that's, you know what I mean? That's just, that needs to be heard or whatnot. Like, just on some true shit. Like, um, um, uh, I, a lot of, uh, I look at the outcasts, you know what I'm saying? So, like, uh, just um, something that's not just the regular that you hear on mainstream type shit, but um, it sound like like it, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't know, man, my style, it it, it ranges, um, but it, it got that, you know, that dirty self and, and that funk to it too, so. You describe your uh, creative process. All right, um, creative process. Normally, you know, I'll make a beat first. Um, I'll go by like the sounds and everything I want do the drum kiss or whatnot. And um, I don't know, it's, it's crazy. Like I, I just let it flow. Um, and I always have like a movie on. Like one of these days I want to score movies. Um, I like I like watching uh, movies and making beats because um, basically I try to like uh, make a beat that would match that scene or that emotion of what's going on mm -hmm. and stuff. So, um, you know what I mean? I'm always reading be tracing like movies in my head and everything and it and it I don't know it inspires me to you know what I mean create um the different type of beats that I do. What's your favorite movie? Some of your favorite movies. Some of my favorite movies. Um, beats? What's some beats you I, what's some uh, some movies you made your best beats to Spike Lee, any almost any Spike Lee movie, um I would have to say uh uh, Mo Better Blues, uh, uh, Clockers. Clockers is one of my favorites from him. That was him and Mark Scorsese. That shit was dope. Um, and um, and Malcolm X. Malcolm X was cool. Um, but then there's this other one, man, uh, from not from Spike Lee, but uh, shit, what's his name? Uh, Jim Hansen and Frank Oz, man, The Dark Crystal. Mm, what's that movie about? That, that movie is so. Uh, Man, that movie is down there about today with, <laughs> come mm. on, you know, or what people will call a conspiracy and shit. But like, um, it's that that movie is is crazy. It's really about um good and evil and how um they had uh the Gethlings were the good people and the Skeksis were um uh, pretty much the government that was in place. And what they end up doing was um. Uh, you know, they they tricked the the Gethlins and thinking that they're just nothing but peasants. When in actuality, um, they were taking the little Gethlins and uh, taking their quote unquote essence from them. And just looking at it, it's like, damn, you're familiar, huh? <laughs> right? <I'm> familiar. <laughs> <laughs> you 
there's a Genocron right in your face. And this shit was uh, brought out back in 1984. It's a it's a trippy movie, man. It's really good. Um, this was before Jim Henson did The Muppets and Sesame Street. So it was like on some, you know, it, it wasn't, it, it was a, it was for the children, but it wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Like in the eighties, they, they put that information in there. So um, it was cool. You know, Netflix, they went ahead and um, did a prequel to that, like last song last year. And that was even good. But uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I like that, that fantasy type shit, man. Well, with my whole thing with, with the movies and stuff, like even like they say it's fantasy to me, even when it's fantasy, it's not fantasy because it's coming from somewhere. So somebody thinks right. that, and you already know how many people think like that. And like you said, sometimes I think they just be like telling us what's going on, but they telling us in movies. <laughs> and we just sitting there like Exactly. Oh, yeah. Exactly. It's funny, man, because uh, I came across this documentary on Netflix and it was uh it was pretty much talking about the ties of the um the FBI, the CIA, and Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And they were saying, you know, um, they had, you know, Walt Disney, the vice, he was the vice president of the this uh, media control and shit. And they would actually have access to classified documents and create a script from it. So mm-hmm. what you think it ain't, ain't far-fetched at all. Like, it, it's, it's there. It's right in front of you. And it's kind of like, you kind of take what you take, you know what I'm saying? Well, what resonates within you? Because I feel like we we all know, you know what I'm saying? Everyone has a uh, intuition, you know what I mean? Like, um, so sometimes you might feel something in your stomach, like something ain't right, or, you know what I mean? They trying to tell me something right here. I don't know, but. uh, <laughs> Yeah, I saw you shit, like you've been working, man. Uh, tell me about these quarantine tapes. Yeah, man. Um, what you say? Like you on a number hundred with the quarantine tapes. What number you on? <laughs> I'm like, on yeah, number. Uh, <laughs> you ain't <laughs> working. You was dropping them every week or something. I was dropping them every week, man. Uh, this was like at the beginning of uh, the lockdown. You know what I'm saying? And um, cause uh, me, me and uh, my partner on um, Bika, uh, we we host shows. We throw shows out at Fresno and stuff. So. You know what I mean? We had a show that was coming. We had somebody from LA that was coming um, and he was crashing with us. And then they had the lockdown. So it was like, fuck. So, um, you know what I mean? With all this creativity in the room and stuff, I was just like, hey man, let's just go ahead and knock out seven tracks of project and just put them out every week. You know what I'm saying? During this lockdown, let's let's see what we can do. And, it was it was fun. It was therapeutic. It was uh, stressful. It was all of that. Like we went through all the um, the motions, you know what I mean? Because I'm doing this outside of my. I'm doing it in my house, right? And um, we're you know we have a family of three, um, beautiful kids. So like with all of that, and <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're not even living in the most um, comfortable and shit. You know what I'm saying? We're working with with our means, but we are putting out. You know what I mean? Some some beautiful songs and shit. So like, we just kept putting them out, man. Uh, we on tape 12, actually. We put out over, it's gotta be a hundred songs now. It gotta be a hundred and we did two music videos. We got a third one coming out um, and we're working on a fourth one, but we're gonna stop the quarantine tapes uh, right now, but we're still gonna put out more projects. I'm gonna put out an instrumental project uh, Vika got a solo project that I'm producing and I'm putting out one as well. So we still going to be working, um, that quarantine stuff. I don't know. I just feel like it was just a warm up. It was a warm up. So now we're going to put more intent and thought into the music. You know what I'm saying? Cause like I said, we was doing all those in real time, just every day, of, you know what I mean? Seven days. Okay, so, what was your, what you said you was doing in the house. So what was you, what's your setup? What was you recording with? Okay, so um, I set up. Um, I got, I got a, um, I got a Mac. Um, you know, I, I was recording on Pro Tools. I made the beats and um, Fruity Loops. Um, sure, and I got a, um, I got a warm audio mic. You know what I'm saying? So that was it. I was, um, we was recording. I was mixing it. I was mastering it, and just uh, putting it out there on um, every Friday. I was gonna say too, man. So. 
when people say they mix and master, what are they actually doing? <laughs> oh, shit. Um, man, uh, mixing is, uh, you know, you EQing the vocals, um, compressing them if needed, like putting the yesers on shit, um, besides chaining the beats. It's, it's, you really just, when mixing is, um, you know, what I learned that, um, like, it's really, you know, there's no right answer to it per se, because it's all about um, your ears or whatnot. So you just got to train your ears for it to sound the best that it could. Um, so with the mixing and whatnot, like, you know, you're just hoping nothing be peaking, especially in recording and stuff. Um, and you have all these different- You mean like their voice? Yeah, like when I when I say peaking, like uh, when when it gets like abruptly loud or some shit, and, and everything, like everything just got to be level and stuff. Um, so uh, you know what I mean? It's, it's really you just trusting your ears, and then you listen to reference tracks. Like you can listen to Dr. Dre or whoever. You don't have to have a million dollar um, studio to have a million dollar sound and shit. So. Um, those were my references. I'll go ahead and listen to that and listen to this. Uh, so, you know, the mixing, that's that's a lot more important than the mastering. The mastering is all you all it's doing is just pumping it up to, you know what I mean, uh, CD mastering quality, like to the public where, you know what I mean, um, really pretty much how it sounds like, you know, with the heavyweights and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, if your mixing ain't shit, your mastering ain't going to do much either. But is it like certain programs you gotta get to mix it and master it, or? Um, I use uh, Pro Tools. Yeah, I use Pro Tools to mix and and Pro Tools masters as well. There's also different um sites right now where you can go ahead and just uh, upload your joint that you mix, and they master it for you. Um, but you got these, you know what I mean? They'll they'll have these different little options of how you would like it to be mastered. You know what I'm saying? Um, so like, for instance, that's one that's Lander. I think it's one that's called like Syria. And uh, with Syria, I haven't even tried yet, but it was saying like, uh, you know, while it's mastering, like you actually see, you know, a visual of uh, these uh, robot hands just like mixing your shit in real time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Well, well just mastering the, the different parts because you got the lows, the mids, the highs. So I don't know, man. Um, it's it's man, so many that, ways. That's like um, they do that in everything, though, not just music, right? Don't they do that for, like TV shows or like podcasts? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I heard that um, there's a lot of uh, like Hollywood films they're running through there. They're running through through um, Lander. Um, yeah, it, it can be used for anything with audio. So it's basically just making the sound quality sound better. Right. Man, I be listening to a lot of music sometimes, man. It's like you can, you can, like it might sound tight, but that shit just yeah. mixing so sounds so goddamn horrible. I just cut the shit off. Like, I, that's the number right. one thing with me. Like, I don't give a fuck how tight it is. If that shit don't sound good, I ain't fucking with it. Like, it got to sound good. Yeah. Like, Period, that's, man. that's the minimum. Like, it can be whack, but if it sound, if the quality good, then okay. If it's whack and it ain't mixed and mastered, that shit sound right. right. Sound and like I felt like uh, I yeah. felt like every say the um the mixing and the quality was just getting better and better and better and everything. Like um, you know what I mean? So I don't know, man. Yeah, then you got some people, like you know, every, you know, we got technology, so they trying to use it, but you got some people that'll be like, Oh, I'm just gonna do it from my phone, but then they don't mix mm -hmm. it or nothing, they just Upload it. <laughs> right. Get the, the beat recorded like that. Then they just upload it. Then we post the like that shit. Like, come on, man. <laughs> it's levels to it, man. It's levels to it. Um, I remember I was doing that, but I was doing that back in high school. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You know like, no better. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> well, and and that was all I had. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like at that time, it was a hobby. But when you start, you know what I mean? When when you when this is all you got and you don't have no nine to five and all the stuff, like you gotta level up if you want other people to level with you. So, I mean, that's I had to invest in myself, man, and, and get that shit. Yeah, I'll say I think I think like one part of the story that you was talking about, I like. So, what made you like? 
Because a lot of people, how you were saying you was working with the Indian dude, and you said he started, like, he wasn't really rapping about where he was um, living. What made right. you believe? Because a lot of people would have been like, well, shit, they ain't got nothing to do with me. And they would just kept getting their money. Hey, well, I think it was um, it was also like a living situation, man. It was it was a little bit of everything. Like I started just realize like um, this dude had already like tried to put me in a box. It was certain little situations where, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, like like I'm I'm a, I'm a nigga from I'm from another state, right? We already know that California is a melting pot, so. While I already agreed to, you know, produce his project and everything, and he agreed that I can, um, you know, crash at um, at a house. Um, what I didn't know when I got there that, you know, it wasn't necessarily his house. Like, it was a house full of family and, you know, <laughs> and his little brothers and sisters and shit. And then, like, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, he won't tell me, you know, what's on the, on the, on the the schedule of the day or whatnot, like he was just waking me up like five in the morning, like hey, we finna fuck type shit and everything. And I was like, bro, I think he already knew that. So I just like he was just trying to see, you know, how like trying to test me, he was trying to test me and whatnot to see if I had what it takes to even be here type shit. And then um when I you know he would have his recording sessions and stuff, you know I would go with him and then the, you know the producer and the engineer would ask, well, who's this guy? And so at that time I was uh I had a music video called Moesha and um it, Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg had an underground countdown show and I was in the top three for that. So like all of that was going on and um uh, engineers, you know, I'm just I'm making connections, I'm getting their contacts and everything. They wanted to work and all this stuff. So it was just interesting, man, because like uh I ended up just like looking at classifieds and all that stuff trying to book him for shows and everything because he didn't want to give me that information. He was just kind of like, nah, you my producer, that's it type shit. And it was like, I ain't come to California to just, you know what I mean, just be in somebody else's bubble like that. Like I'm here to work like with everyone and everything. So when I felt like it was just on some selfish type of act, I was like, yo, this don't resonate with my spirit. I got to get out of here. Then give us an interesting uh, life story something in your life that happened? <laughs> um, God damn. So many, man. Um, man, I'll say this. Uh, um, when I came out, out to Amber, I came to um, visit um, on Bika and stuff, and we was vibing. None of us had a car or nothing, so we was, we was on, you know, on foot. And, uh, it was walking in this neighborhood and it was this this pit that just kept barking at us, kept barking. And we saw it was on the leash and everything, but he kept like running and kept getting yanked. And he kept running and kept getting yanked. <laughs> and then you ran one more time. And um the uh <laughs> the chain broke loose. The chain broke loose. Uh he wasn't in no gate or nothing. And he was running straight towards me, right? Um Bika. She done jumped on the fence. Um, her cousin jumped on some car, and I'm right here in the middle of the road, and he running full fledged, right? And so, what I did was like I, I, I like I like squat down. I just put my hands out like this, and I kid you not, like he running full throttle, and then like at least three inches from me, it was like there was like a, a invisible wall that he just ran smack into and then he walked away. Hmm. And then he just walked away. Be good and her cousin just looking like what just happened. I'm still trying to figure it out myself, but um, I, I don't know, I just never forget that because uh, like when, when I saw him charging coming toward me, like I just remember how I was feeling. Like it, it wasn't much of a fear. <laughs> It wasn't much of a fear, but it was more of me, man. I'm about to stare into this motherfucker eyes and just, like, I don't know. It, it was like something, if you believe, you know what I mean? Whatever. And 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 I don't know, man. That was on some real supernatural type shit. And, and what was it then? What you think it was? Um, I don't know. I think, uh, I think we all got... Um, 
you know what I mean, certain type of uh, mobilities that, um, that, you know what I mean? I don't know. I just, I, I just, I don't know, man. It's weird. It's weird. I don't know what it is. I'm Aquarius, so it's just, uh, I just got a little different perspective, like outlook on life and shit. Um, as far as like, I haven't just been in like, a, you know, the hood. I've been a little bit of um, everywhere type shit or whatnot. So I don't, I can't really be so judgmental of people or whatnot because everyone is a, you know, a product of their own environment. So um i don't know man i really just believe in like uh intuition and manifesting and um um just shit like i i don't know man like it ain't the first time like some shit like that happened or whatnot it's been a lot of little different, just different interesting things but i just felt like i'm just being guided by my ancestors for the most part and what tell me about your wrist in the ring Oh, so I just uh, I just got this. Actually, it's um, it's this crew out of uh, Sacramento. Um, uh, one dude like self-made. Um, the other one is um, King and Pure Frequency, and like they they some they 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 some vegan spiritual rappers. Like they shit hard. It remind me of like Goody Mob, but they uh. They 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 say they they eat shrooms and they just always like on a cloud ten and things or whatnot. So um, it's just cool vibing with them. But one of them create like copper jewelry and stuff. And uh, you know he was just saying all the like in, interesting facts about um, copper and um, you know um, um, things about like how it you know protects you on like on some. You know, spiritual shit and and mental things and it, it heals stuff in the body or whatnot. Like if you use a a copper straw or whatnot, um, and you drink some dirty water going through it, um, the copper will filter out all the, you know, all the dirty shit, hmm. and you're drinking pure water. So you know, just interesting things like that. Um, so I just got got this. Um, I haven't been on a jury game in years and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But this whole lockdown of COVID made niggas really just uh, sit down and think and really just, uh, you know, analyze things and um, start understanding and realizing what's really more important in life. You know what I mean? So. You got email. I want to get, I want to get, you know, there's a difference or no? Since you uh, like I literally got this like three days ago. <laughs> Like, so it, day, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't know, man. I, I feel, I feel cool or whatnot. Like it just, uh, you know, it feel like, uh, you know, a certain type of armor in a way. Um, you know what I'm saying? And uh, just a different um style than a than a norm and whatnot. Like, you know, I don't know. It feels good. It. I want to check it out. Yeah. Yeah, man. And, and it's, you know. I say, so what are you, it's uh, not, uh, what's up? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. It, it ain't on some, like, expensive type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's cool, you know? Yeah, I want to give me time. That shit look cool. I like it. So what are your Appreciate goals? It. What's your goals with your career? I don't know if I asked you that already. Um... Man, my goal really is, um, man, um, I just want to keep leveling up and, and elevating it and really just have my my family uh, all the way straight. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, just give me a house with with seven or eight rooms and I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, um, I just really want us to um, be comfortable. You know what I mean? Um, with with everything, it's a lot of shit going on. Um, as far as uh, with the the music and everything, man, I want to score movies. Um, I want to, you know, become as big as uh, as Dr. Dre once was, or shit, once was, still is. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you would be saying once you know, was because that prenup, that divorce coming up. That's probably why. You <laughs> 
Yeah, man. I don't know how that's gonna play out. That's crazy, no. man. But um, I would uh, I I look up to Dr. Dre and Diddy. I love uh, Diddy's um album directions and stuff. They always sound like a soundtrack for me. So um, yeah, man. Uh, that's 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 my that's my goals right now, man. Just hoping uh, everybody can straight in financial freedom. Mm. And what advice would you give to new artists? Say it again. What advice would you give to new artists? Um, for new artists, go big, man. Just, just go big and really be honest with yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, they say, you know, only you can be your worst credit and all this stuff. But at the end of the day, it's just like, um some people just know that they can just be better. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and if you're honest with yourself and you, you know, put in a, a extra amount of work, you know what I'm saying? Just don't have stuff. Don't have stuff at all, man. If this is what you want to do, just do it. No no questions asked and everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, when I first moved to California, I, it was just one, I went off for one paycheck. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't have no plan at all. I had no plan. And logically, that shit, probably wouldn't even make no sense going in there and you know what I'm saying it, it definitely I had to live with my consequences you know what I'm saying so you know there was times where um you know I was walking all day and going from you know bus to bus and all this stuff but at the same time that's how I saw people you know what I mean that's how I realized you know this is how this is and, and I started realizing the the cause and effect of things so it gives me a perspective to talk about it through my lyrics and use it as whatever like from present tense to folklore and all this shit it's just you start understanding like these are histories or of things that's been like repeated and repeated itself just now in a whole different way you know what i'm saying so um i, I just you know for new artists man just y'all gotta push harder and and have a broader perspective of things and i think you'll go a long way mm -hmm. What would you like to say to your fans and supporters? Man, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all um, to death. Y'all been fucking with me for a minute. Y'all have seen the evolution. Y'all seen the growth. Um, man, I like like I said, it's I, I appreciate y'all because sometimes it's not easy where it's just, you know, myself or, or me and Vika just going off, off of, you know, our own uh you know, our own creativity or whatnot. You know, sometimes we may feel like it's on death of ears, you know what I mean? But um, all they'll take is like, you know what I'm saying, the fans or whatnot, and then just reaching out to us. And I appreciate the emails. I got one from a dude from Germany that hit me up out of nowhere, loving the quarantine tape. So um, I appreciate y'all, man, because uh, at the end of the day, that's all we want to do. We want to connect. Okay, what's up? Well, appreciate you, man. How you, um, shit, that's some problem I got damn face. Anyway, <laughs> I would say, uh, and anybody just not hearing about you through this interview, why should they go check you out and follow you? Oh, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? Y'all should go ahead and check me out and, um, and follow me, man. Um, just, you'll, you'll hear, uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, not everything is, is for everybody. Well, not, but I feel like, you know, it's for you. So I please uh, just, just take some minutes out of your time and, and check out any of the quarantine tapes. I got a single out called Ha Ha. Um, that's dope. It's featuring um, B. I made the beat and it's a music video for it, too. Um, I've been getting a lot of love about, about that. So, um, you know what I'm saying? For, for all the new people that's just hearing about me again, my name is Sir 7000 from Palm Beach, Florida. Now I'm up in California. You know what I'm saying? Um, hopefully, y'all fuck with me. All right, man. I want to say thanks for coming through politics with me. Thank you, man. This is a dope platform, man. Please keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. I'm getting tired, man. I've been doing shit for 12 years. Shit. Man. Some bread or something. <laughs> <laughs> shit, this shit get old. Shit, I'm trying to get some money. Shit. I hear you. Uh -huh. appreciate that. I would say, yes, uh, what's your social media again? Uh, social media, Instagram, I am Sir Seven Thousand. 
Um, so that's pretty much the only thing I stay active on. So. Away and on these shows since COVID hit, a whole lot of shit came to surface. And everything I do ain't enough, it's time to murder. Then on this pen, I go in, I go motherfucking in. I lost my son and my heart got a motherfucking dent. Now I look into my daughter's eyes, bless what it signifies. Keep going even when I'm tired. I don't even look for blessings in the skies. Too busy burning bridges, severing all my ties. All my life, I had to fight. All my life, I take flight. All my life can't get right All my life can't get motherfucking right All my life I had to fight All my life I take flight All my life can't get right All my life can't get motherfucking right Can't catch a fucking break Demons on my head Hope my angels on the way Flashing lights up in the red Trying to take me out the mood And I'ma stay Trying to make a nigga flex But I'ma pray Talking THC, I'm talking vibes. Said I'm on my way, I'm finna slide. Shit, I made my own wave, I'm tryna ride. Smooth criminal shit, I'm talking Mike. I ain't tryna eat the cake, I'm talking Ike. All my life had to fight, but I can't get shit right. All my life I had to fight. All my life I take flight. All my life can't get right. All my life can't get motherfucking right All my life I had to fight All my life I take flight All my life can't get right All my life can't get motherfucking right The Poe Politicking Show is brought to you by Audible. With over 180,000 titles to choose from, Audible is great for any continuous learner wanting to grow and expand their knowledge and insight. Go to www.audibletrial.com slash PO Audio and get an audiobook of your choice free with a 30-day trial. After the trial, your paid membership will begin at $14.95 per month. With your membership, you will receive one credit every month, good for an audiobook on Audible. Cancel before your trial ends and you will not be charged. So go to www.audibletrial.com slash PO Audio and download a free book by Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, Napoleon Hill, Les Brown, Damon John, and more. Always remember that knowledge is power.